Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this big guy right here. This is the Cold Steel Knives 4Max, a collaboration with Andrew Demko, uh, who is a well-known designer that works with them on a regular basis. First off, I want to thank very much my buddy Brian for sending this little guy along. This is a knife that I've thought about a lot, but I uh, never actually got a chance to handle, and I always thought it was just completely and totally absurd. Um, turns out, yes, it is, but it's also kind of compelling, so thank you very much, Brian. Next thing, size comparison. Um, first against the uh, Spyderco Delica and Ben made 940. So as you can see here, this is rather a large knife. Um, oh my god, is this thing crazy. Compared to the Delica, um, the Delica itself fits entirely within the blade of this knife, more or less. And the, uh, the 940... <laughs> oh, seems absolutely tiny. Here it is against, for tradition's sake, the Ontario Rat number 1. The uh, Steel Wheel Cut Jack 3-inch model. Uh, the Spyderco PM2, which is a knife that I also believe to be a little bit large, although I cannot really sustain that opinion anymore. And uh, my token crazy huge knife, the uh, ZT0452CF, which looks very, very petite next to this little guy right here. Holy crap, is this thing big. So um, there you go. And then finally, a quick note, there is no disassembly of this knife. We'll talk about why a little bit later, but uh, for the moment, there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad and the ugly of this particular pocket knife here. So first off, on the good side, um, this has a very nice blade. The steel on it is CPM 20 CV, which is a, uh, a great steel. It's one of the best, if not the best, steels out there. And that's good. Um, and you get a nice shape to it, too. You get some flat, you get some belly, you get a nice tip for piercing sorts of cuts. No complaints there. The blade finish is nice as well. Yeah, let me see if I can kind of polish this off a little bit here. But um, you can see you've got a nice sort of stonewashy finish, maybe a little scratchier than some, but actually I think that'll serve to hide wear very well. I like the finish on this blade very, very much. Um, but the biggest thing that I like about this blade is that it will actually cut things. Seeing blade stock this damn thick, I mean, compared to the PM2, which already has thick stock, this is ridiculously thick stock, but the fact is it's a very high grind, and it's, it's done in a way that makes this knife actually usable. I tried using this for food prep, and you know what? It worked. I tried using this for uh, cutting cardboard down. Absolutely, it worked. This is a blade that will actually function in your everyday life as a cutting tool. Unlike some super overbuilt knives, this has been thought through as a, as a tool. And I love that very much. And frankly, that could be a separate good thing. But on the whole, I like this blade very much. And I think it is a very nice little tool here. Well, little, <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, next thing, ergonomically speaking, this actually works surprisingly well as well. I have smaller hands than most, but you can see here that I have a comfortable grip, either in this position, where I'm kind of backed off a little bit if I want to do chopping cuts, or I can choke up on use this finger choil here, and it actually works well there too. I suspect this would be more comfortable if I had larger hands, 100%, but you know what? It works, and the balance is done well. It's got a nice thick backspacer in the back here to offset this blade. It feels lively in the hand. It doesn't feel awkward like uh, some bigger knives have, actually. I mean, it's it's completely ridiculous, ergonomically speaking, but it works quite well. There aren't really hot spots or anything. I'm, I'm really impressed with the ergos here. Next thing, this can actually be put in your pocket. It has a pocket clip, but actually, you know, it is absolutely huge. I mean, again, compared to your Delica here, this is not exactly a tiny little knife for the pocket, but at the same time, I was surprisingly able to carry it. I carried this around, and absolutely, there was a big amount of weight on my that side of me, but it wasn't, like, awkward. It wasn't because it's relatively compact. It's it's done in such a way that it'll hang down. I, I'm not saying this is something I want to carry, but it wasn't bad. I really expected it to be completely unwieldy to carry, but it was okay, which is good, I guess. Next thing is the mystery hole, this little hole right here. I asked on Instagram, what the heck is this hole doing? I got some great responses. An attachment point for a bayonet was one theory. A uh, second lanyard hole for redundancy, which I like. Um, I, I ended up going with a uh, childproofing lock. We just put a padlock through there, and that way your kids are never going to be able to get access to your knife. Um, but it turns out that the, 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 the correct answer is that this is a... Uh, secondary stop pin hole. So apparently what you can do is take a uh, some kind of a metal stop pin there and drop it on through there. See? Nailed it. Uh, anyways, and drop it through there. And what this means is that no matter what you're doing, even if the lock itself failed, the blade cannot come shut on you. Um, which is 
not necessary, particularly given this lock, but you know what? There it is. And so, I, I you know, it's kind of a, a weird little detail, but hey, why not? And it's kind of cool that they threw that in there. So, um, there you go. It's got your mystery hole. I guess that's a good thing. Next thing, this has full liners. A lot of what Cold Steel does is using, uh, you know, G10 as I tell or whatever the heck kind of stuff they use, um, but this has full steel liners meaning that this is a crazy, durable knife, which is the final good thing. Um, they brag on their website that this thing supports 800 pounds of free-swinging weight. I don't think that matters. I believe it. I don't think it matters. But the thing is, um, it is going to be a knife that is absolutely durable. I am not concerned about this knife failing in any particular way. Between the triad lock here, which gives you plenty of security in and of itself, the fact that the, the construction is just very solid feeling, the knife really does feel... I mean, this is a knife that is absolutely going to be durable in a variety of situations. Even the edge strikes me as a very durable edge, even though it cuts. So, um, this is a knife that will probably take any abuse you throw at it, um, and do so safely. That is probably the best thing that cold steel does on a regular basis is make huge jackassy knives that are also relatively safe. So um, there, there you go. That's the good to me is that this is super durable. It has full liners, which had the durability. It has the uh, the Demko Mysteries hole, which is a secondary stop pin hole. Um, it has a uh, truly ambidextrous, I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, it is an ambidextrous knife. You can swap the clip over there, I believe. And um, it is more pocketable than you would think. It has pretty good ergonomics, even for my smaller hands. And the blade on this guy is very nice because it's made of good materials and it does actually cut things. To me, what is great about this knife, though, is the fact that they made this knife. Um, I mean, seriously, this is a knife that only Cold Steel and Andrew Demko would make. You could not label this knife and I would immediately tell you it was a Cold Steel or an Andrew Demko. Um, I, I appreciate very, very, very much that they did this um, because it's unlike a lot of things in production. I mean, there are, uh, you know, custom mid techy sorts of things like your Medfords, your Diawares that are these super overbuilt things, but this actually cuts things. This is, a, and it's a much more, I don't know, it feels a little bit more tool-like than pocket jewelry-like in that way. And so, you know what, that's, to me, is what's great is that they're doing something that's completely ridiculous, but they're doing it well. The fact that they're doing it all is kind of neat. So um, to me, that's what's great. Let's talk about the bad. So on the bad side, first off, this is a very expensive knife. This is $300. Now, that said, I don't actually think it's that bad. Um, this is a massive chunk of CPM 20 CV, which is a high-end steel. Um, but more importantly, who's making something similar? I mean, I just touched on this. The, the other options, if you want something that is this big and this overbuilt, is something like Medford Knives, Dioware, Hinderer, although you'd have to go with like their, their, their fatty versions. But either way, in those departments, you're always going to be paying more five, you know, five or six hundred bucks here. And considering that this is actually ground to cut and that it, you've got, you know, a war warranty from a production company coming off of it, I'm actually not so opposed to the price tag. It's high. It's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people, but I don't think they're ripping my face off here, which is good. Next thing, um, they did not quite hit the sharpening choil. You can see here that the finger choil extends a little bit further, but it doesn't quite get the end of the plunge. So you see this little chin sticking out there. End of the world? No. Something I'd like to see him fix in the future. Next thing, the triad lock is something that I am not a huge fan of in practical use, just because it requires a lot more push to um, disengage the knife, um, which is not something that I particularly love. In this case, maybe the added strength is, a, well, in this case, it's kind of designed for the added strength, but that always makes this a little bit more of a pain in the neck than a conventional back lock knife like this little guy, which is just much easier to disengage the lock on. Um, and actually, speaking of that, um, this is not a knife that I can operate using one hand as a result. Um, I cannot even open this with one hand because my thumbs are just not quite long enough, etc. Let's see if I can... Okay, I was able to pull it off that time, but it is a really awkward process. And then closing this with one hand, I just don't know that I have the ability to do that because I can't get my finger up here at the same time that I apply enough pressure to the triad lock zone. This is basically a two-hand knife for me. This might be different for somebody with gigantic freaking Yeti paws going on there, but I, I don't have them. And so that is something to keep in mind. If you're looking for something that is going to be one-hand friendly, this is not going to be that. Um, and that may be a problem for you. 
Next thing, fit and finish on this guy is honestly not all that great. You can see that there are gaps between the liners and whatnot. As you run your finger across this, the G10 is sticking up higher and lower. The uh, lock bar in the back here is actually floating a little bit. It's got a little bit of gap on this side, but it can move to the other side there. Look, you know, it's not an exceptionally well-built knife. Um, it is a knife that is big more than it is. This is quantity over quality, if you will. Um, I think it's fine for what it needs to do, and like functionally speaking, it's okay. But if you're looking at this as a fit and finish piece, you're not going to be happy with it. Um, that's that's for sure. And then finally, on the bad side, uh, something that, you know, I, I struggle to call this bad because it's kind of what you're getting into. But this knife is absolutely massive, as I've already touched on, but it's also absolutely heavy. Um, if we put this on the scale here, this comes in at 10.04 ounces. 10.04 ounces. Holy crap, is this thing big. I mean, it is beefy. It is absolutely gigantically heavy. And so, although that's what you're getting into when you go into something that is super, super big like this, holy crap, is that heavy. So, um, that is a, a whole bunch of weight. Um, if you like it, you're going to be happy with it nonetheless, but yikes. So anyways, that's the bad to me is that this is, oh my God, heavy. It's absolutely massive. There's part and parcel here. I cannot actually manipulate this knife with one hand, but that may be a small hand issue. Fit and finish on it is so-so. The triad lock is always a little bit of a pain given the amount that you need to push all the way in to get there. Uh, they didn't quite nail the sharpening choil, and it is a very pricey knife, although I actually don't think the price is out of line given what you're getting here. On the ugly side, there are three things. Um, first off, I've mentioned this many times, Cold Steel's got some ugly history with the whole trademarking San Mai thing. That said, I haven't heard anything about them shaking people down in 2017, so I'm going to start letting this fade from reviews. I still don't love it, it's still ugly, but I'm going to forgive and forget for now. Hopefully they don't start doing that again, or else I'll have to bring it back. Next thing, um, the disassembly on this guy was not able to happen. The reason for that is that this pivot is entirely free spinning. It'll it'll just you twist here and it'll just twist in the back there. It's untooled on the back side and they are using some kind of serious thread locker on there. Maybe given time with a soldering iron and whatnot I could have won, but this is a loner and above all else do no harm when I'm doing knife maintenance. So that was a little bit frustrating. And especially for a knife that you're going to be putting abuse into, I'd like to see this non-free spinning and I'd like to see this available to be serviced. Then finally on the ugly side, the Look at this. These are T6 screws. These are T6 screws on this knife. T6, this knife. T6 is too damn small on pretty much any knife. But on this one, come on, people. Why? 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 Anyways, so that that's just that's ugly to me. You could afford to use much bigger, much deeper, much more reliable and robust screws, but they're still using freaking T6 on this thing, and that's completely ridiculous to me. So um, those are the ugly things. T6, there's no disassembly, and Cold Steel's got an ugly pass, but I'm going to start leaving that one go. Um, Let's jump into the final conclusion. My final conclusion here is actually that when I first, you know, picked this guy up, I expected this to be sort of a eh, LOL sort of Cold Steel uh, review. I expected this to be a parody. Well, maybe not a parody, but I expected it to be a review that was focused around the humor of the ridiculousness of this knife. Um, And so I, I, I just expected this to be something that would amuse me and maybe amuse my viewers and we'd move on with life. The last thing I expected was for this to be a really good knife. And weirdly enough... This is a really good knife. Um, it's probably not for me, it's probably not for you, but it is very well done, 100%, because it is strong, 100%. It's ergonomic, it carries better than you would think. The materials on it are very nice, I can't argue with that. It is priced pretty competitively, given that there's not that much out there, especially that cuts things, and it is actually a useful and usable cutting tool, even being this big and crazy and ridiculous. Sure, it's absolutely huge. It is absolutely heavy. It requires huge hands. The disassembly thing is ugly, and it is not a super high-end fit and finish piece. But the thing is, I can absolutely 100% respect this knife. I can respect the execution of it here. I can respect Demco and Cold Steel for doing this at all. And I can respect that they've made a knife here that is 
not to everybody's taste, but is a damn good choice. And so, although it's a bit too huge and heavy and non-disassemblable for me to hit gem, I, I think that if you love the idea of this knife, if you're looking at this and going, oh, that's cool, and you like the style of this, and you, and you are a human of requisite scale to be able to manipulate it happily, then I think that, by God, the 4Max is going to be a gem for you. This is a surprisingly good knife. I, freaking go figure, right? So anyways, there you go. The Cold Steel 4 Max is a very nice knife. Not a nice knife for me, but it is a very nice knife. And so uh, I think you should absolutely check one out if it seems to be your style. Go figure. Alrighty, hope this has been interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. And I hope this review for maximized your enjoyment. Bye now.